Okay, what else are we talking about, Craig? You had some more stuff there. Yeah, we do have some more things here. I'm sorry. Do we have this video? Yes. I don't know that. Maybe we might get not that because that's the, it's happening in real time. Okay, so we'll just talk about it. We don't need to show it anyway. Okay. So, so I had pulled this story. Turn off that fan, Mo. Because I thought it would be a great um, cautionary tale. And um, so this young woman, she was 27. She was shot and killed. She's from Baltimore, from my hometown. Um, she's 27. She had a four-year-old. The four-year-old was with his father when this incident happened. She had a, she had a restraining order against this ex-boyfriend. Yep. The ex-boyfriend was slightly younger than she was. Um, and in the video, you hear one of the neighbors who videotapes this, who's yelling, leave, leave her alone. alone. Don't you hurt her? Right. Yeah. And um, so I had pulled this story together because I was like, okay, I think this is a great, um, again, a cautionary tale. But again, I felt like she did everything she was supposed to do. She had a, a restraining order. Well, I was talking to my mother the other day, Gladys Christine Stewart, and she was like, yeah, you know Nakia's daughter got killed. Nakia is my cousin. I grew up in Nakia. Wow. So my male cousin. So this was his daughter. I had no idea. Oh, I had, really? I had never met her. I had never met her. And my mother was like, yeah, you know, they don't even know where this boy is. And he's talking about he doesn't care that, you know, if, if, you know, if the police come after him because he's going to take his own life. Oh. He's not going to jail. And so once I started digging into the story, once it, I realized that it was somebody in my family, um, I found out that they had a history of arguing and fighting and you know and her father she's my cousin she was my cousin too but i didn't know her but i knew her dad i know her dad and her dad you know was like well we've always told her to stay away from him like if you can't get along then y'all need to just break up and like i said she had a restraining order but he still killed her but i think the other part of this conversation is also again like i said one day before how we raise our boys. We have to start teaching our boys how to handle emotion and how to handle and accept rejection. Because that, that is crazy. What was insane was the way he did it, like right out there in broad daylight. Broad daylight. Like right out there in the pocket. She's like, you know I got a restraining order on right. you. You know right. this. Right, <sighs> right, right. And so um, this we, is this truly insane. Yeah, we have to. We, I mean, we have to see about our boys in a different kind of way. Like I said before, I think we raise our girls very differently. We don't really teach boys, especially black boys, how to process feelings and emotions. And again, we expect, the, you know, just, even in the way that we tell little boys, stop crying, stop being a little girl, stop crying like a little girl. We have to teach them what to do with those feelings and those emotions instead of teaching them and telling them to suppress it or to, to bottle it up because then they don't, they don't know where to put it. Ladies, if that nigga whooping you, kill that nigga. I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to tell you nothing wrong. If that nigga is whooping on you, kill that nigga. If that nigga raise his voice at you, throw, a, throw some boiling hot water in that nigga's face. Fuck that nigga up. Mm -hmm. You got to put the fear of God into a nigga so that when he doing something to you, bitch, he has to know that bitch. I, that bitch ain't playing. Hey, that bitch ain't the one. Or I, two. I may have beat that other bitch ass like that, but this bitch right here going to fuck. Bitch, we going out. I told a motherfucking nigga one time, bitch, I was in the car. I said, bitch, we both hitting this tree. Bitch, I got in the fight in the car before. We both going to this tree, bitch, today. We both going. So I was coming down 150 miles an hour, bitch. We going. You ain't gonna fucking tell the story. You ain't gonna live and they're gonna be looking for you, bitch. They're gonna find us, mm -hmm. bitch. They're gonna find us, bitch. I've been saying this shit since I seen Dr. that Dr. Dre tan motherfucker came uh Michelle Michelle ass up on that show when I was in the kitchen frying sausages, bitch. Kill that nigga. Kill them, that them, nigga. Them car fights are crazy, bitch. Kill that nigga. I've been saying this since then. I don't even know when that motherfucking show came out when she, that he was whooping on her. Bitch, he ain't even cute enough to be stomping on me. Kill that nigga. 
so that you kill him or you damn near kill that motherfucker so that he know, bitch, that he can't go out in the world and fuck nobody else's daughter up like okay. that. Mm, mm, mm. So that he don't even have no motherfucking uh, the unmitigated gall to have thoughts about going in there choke slamming another motherfucking another woman another person's daughter kill that nigga if you got to do it when that nigga is sleeping bitch with his he's in the shower bitch kill that nigga ain't no fucking don't let him survive or take him to the brink of, of demise, bitch, so that he understands, bitch, that he can't get up and do that to you no motherfucking more if you decide to stay there. Mm hmm. Mm. Fuck that nigga up in front of your children so that your sons see that if a fucking man, he, if you're sort of your daughter, see if a nigga swing on them, kill that nigga. I dare any one of them motherfucking crazy bitches to try to wear, wear on me. Ain't no love, ain't that much love in the world. Bitch, it wouldn't have been no motherfucker. Yeah, it would have been beat on Dre. <laughs> Fuck beats by Dre. Okay. It would have been beat on Dre, bitch. Okay. Bitch, you got me fucked up completely. Ike Turner, bitch, would have been truck turner. Ran, ran the fuck over by a truck. Mm-mm. Yes, do this while he is resting in his body. Okay, you whoop my ass at eight o'clock this late the night. Go Bitch, to I'm sleep. I'm gonna see you at two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I'm gonna see you at no, two a.m. No, God a. gonna see you at two okay. a.m. You gonna wake up dead. Bitch, you gonna wake up. I'm gonna be over your throat with the tip of that knife right there at your throat. Saying, "Nigga, today is your last day amongst the living." This the last, this the first time you whoop me in the last. If I let you get up from here, bitch, if I ever, if you ever raise your hand towards the sky, towards me, bitch, you better be raising your hand up, telling the police to come get you, bitch. Bitch, because bitch, this bitch is in here trying to kill me. Kill that nigga. Mm -hmm. Too many niggas walking around here free whooping on bitches and shit like that. And y'all over here like waiting on, you waiting on some man to help you. Yeah, me, oh my God, bitch. They don't give a fuck about them. Fuck that nigga break line up. Go to work, nigga. 